Lunch time in Germany. Hi friends, I'm making this rice and broccoli today. So I've already parboiled this rice, wash it. It's time to add my little salt. This rice, after cooking it, it should be between hard and soft, not really too soft like that, like how you have your fried rice so that it can be a little bit sharp in the mouth when you chew it. For this rice not to be too, in, I always add something to it to make it uh, a little bit browny or taste a little bit uh, interesting, delicious. So I add a little bit of Maggi cube to it. And this Maggi cube I'm adding to it, look at how little it is, just a little bit that one could not even know exactly what is inside or what you add inside it, that the one can be sure and say there's spice or maggi to it, just to have a little bit of getting it out of usual taste of uh, this is a normal rice or a rice that uh, is just cooked like that. Then I'm going to leave this rice to continue boiling and I start preparing the sauce I need for this rice. I usually get the big carrots in order to get the quantity I want instead of cutting and shelling so many at the same time. So this is the two carrots I'm using today for my sauce. So I continue shelling this um, carrot. After that, I go ahead and cut my carrot into tiny pieces, but it has to be a little bit uh, hard in the mat when you're chewing it. You're going to feel it not too tiny like that. I love cutting this carrot a little bit thick like this because I want to hear that noise it makes when I chew it. That is the fun of it. Uh, but anyone can go ahead and cut it however it suits you. Here's the mumba. Navigate your mindset if you want to understand. Mumba mumba. Horse mumba. I remember when I came new here in Germany, I saw this broccoli. I was like, how would people eat this and how would they put it in the mouth? Because I just look at it, how it looks. It looks like something that is going to have one taste that is going to be so disturbing because I have problem with this. I like it when it's water taste or usual taste like uh, salty, sweet and nothingness. Uh, maybe zawa, but if it's not really this test, I don't want anything that's tasting like perfume or um soap cream in it. I, I just like natural test. But when I test this in one friend of mine forced me to test this broccoli, I find out that the test is very normal. I can eat it. I've been eating it since, and I had it very healthy. Most if you're pregnant or you have growing children, even for you, so it's good if you can eat it much. Often. Then I went back to check on my rice and my rice is done. Here is the master itself, the mackerel. You know, I wanted the taste of this mackerel. That is the idea. The idea of having this broccoli taste and the mackerel mixed together. So here is my experiment. I'm adding some spice to the mackerel before I start frying them. So I first go with salt. Then I add it some more time and then um, now I'm adding curry. One thing with mackerel is to get these spices inside them. I have to start mixing it somehow, like turning the back of it because this mackerel is very soft. Do you usually bring out your mackerel to get a little bit softer? That every water in it goes out before it starts frying. In a way not to keep you long on frying it. This is how I do my own. I let it dry out the water. Or the water getting out of it by melting before I start frying it. So here I am now missing my spice on it. Like turning it over and trying to spray a little bit more on top of it. Because I really like it to be spicy. Tasty. A kind of...
I'm cross checking if everything is well covered with the spice, like the quality, just to be sure. Adding a little bit oil. Sometimes I use olive oil, sometimes not. I'm using the normal oil because the normal oil is not changing any taste, that's why I use it much often more than the olive oil so here's my fish frying i use one fish because kids they don't eat fish it's just me who's going to eat this my one fish and that's why i'm making only one fish for this lunch how tiny it is i'm lying it one after the other in the pan to get it it has to be a little bit crispy Yes, my friend, after removing this fish from the fire, here is the magic, this sauce from fish, what I want to use and fry my sauce today. That's the idea, me having this fish test within my broccoli. This is it. The fish test is here. This is this sauce from the fried fish. This beautiful, sweet, delicious oil from fish. Now I'm going to start adding some things in my sauce. Let's go. So here first my tomatoes. Today I didn't have a tomato that is very hard. Usually I use tomatoes that are about to ripe so that I can feel the tomatoes in my mouth because I'm not going to fry it like African stew. It's going to be like frying it like vegetable that I can have the tomatoes in my mouth when I'm chewing it and it has to be a little bit strong or hard when I'm chewing it but this is what I have today. Since the tomato is a little bit soft so I'm going to fry it almost like I'm frying the African stew tomato sauce so let me just go a little bit about it like this to let it go away small since it's a a little bit sour because the tomatoes are overripe is not going to give me the real taste of that tomato the freshness like the one you can use and eat breakfast or the one you chew like this if you want to eat it as vegetable so for today i needed to cook it a little bit long usually i don't cook like just put it on it and add all that to it today i just turn it for a while like kind of pressing it to let it this is a little bit because uh, eating it like this is not going to be that hard in the mouth and i added my carrot this is the two carrot i cut i just needed this carrot now to absorb some of this uh, oil from the macrofish for like one minute or two. This is the broccoli. Adding it after chopping it. This is how I chop mine. I don't know how you like to chop yours. <laughs> but this is how I chop mine. So I'm just adding it to it. When broccoli is there, if you have your time and you could pay small attention, it's better turn one, two, three, four, and get it out of the fire. But for kids, broccoli is also one of the vegetables that kids don't like to eat like that. Unless they're used to it. This is why I started early to cook this broccoli for my kids that they can start eating it early. But even at that, they don't like it so much. A life like that, like too greenish. So I cook it for a while. But the most important thing would have been to just put it, turn it, and just get it out because the heat alone is enough for it to get ready to get done or get through the heat. One needs to heat it before it's ready to eat. It's not something that stays so long in fire. I add um, thyme to it, then curry. This is tiger curry and tiger thyme I'm using for today. Stirring. Yeah, you see how greenish the broccoli is? This would have been down for a long time, but because of kiss, I just keep it still a little bit. I'm using today the onga maggi. You know, the onga maggi is kind of sweet for me. 
So I would like to use it today for this thing. But this is the shrimps, the onga shrimps I'm using for this broccoli sauce. And I use just the half of it from the onga shrimps, half of it. This one added to this uh, broccoli. Then I garnish this my sauce today with this uh, onions which I cut into round form to let it be a kind of uh, appetizing when one see it this is why i made it like this let the food draw you to itself guys i'm trying to separate the onion somehow so that it can be one one but somehow it's not working with one hand sorry that the onions is not separating but i still um, try to do it how i can so here is the food this onions has to come out looking almost like it never went into fire this is how it can be outside in a way not to cook more because the food is still hot and the food is still cooking it then at the end it won't be how it's supposed to be you you need to feel the sound in your mouth when you eat it even this a uh, burning whatever it's called that is in onions that is uh, making you tear has to be there a little bit and i'm adding my fish at last because this fish when I turn it too much, it's going to melt. That's why I'm just putting it there at last. But you didn't ask, where's the pepper I used today for the food? You forgot it because the kids are not going to eat the pepper that is going to pen them and they will be uncomfortable with it. So this pepper, I'm adding at last. If it happens today that my husband will come back and eat this food. So if the food is enough, then I'll be leaving some of this pepper into his food. That's the plan. <laughs> adding a little bit salt just a little bit salt because we've added so many salts in many places that's why i have to just add just a little bit we come to the end of this cooking please wait before you go in case you finish this cooking and from your vegetables you don't have enough water in it you need to just sprinkle some water like two eating spoon three eating spoon according to how much vegetables you have so that it can be a kind of dripping when somebody takes it up, not that it's going to be watery. Like, see, I'm turning it, you can barely get the water. This is the kind of water that will be in it, just small. Like, when you pour it into the rice, there will be no water left in your plate when you eat it, but it still have to be like, it's like watery. Then you have enough sauce to eat your rice. Thank you. Time to dish this food, my friend. This food, you can cook it with meat. You can cook it with chicken. You can cook it with anything you like, but today I just love this macretes and my broccoli, and I know my kids will like it. So see you and guys. Thank next you so much for watching my video, and we we'll see us in other dishes we are about to make. Thank you for being here. Bye. I remain your friend, Cynthia Sweet Bro. Have a nice time. Bye. <laughs> Now how to get your mindset If you want to understand Mba mba Hiss mba mba Now how to get your mindset If you want to understand Mba mba Hiss mba mba Now how to get your mindset